Is it realistic to never lie in your life? Is it realistic to always tell the truth? Is that even possible? What does that even mean? That's what I want to dig into in this video today. And I'll start with a story because this concept is a concept that has changed my life. There was a point in time when I was at university and I heard about this concept, right? I was sat down, I remember I was about 18 years old, sat down at my computer desk at my dorm room. I would eat, you know, like a plate of food and watch a, you know, Jordan Peterson video, right? And he would talk about this topic a lot, right? So I'd watch this and he would tell a lot and speak a lot about telling the truth, right? Always tell the truth, no matter what, no matter where you are, always tell the truth. And I was fascinated by this idea and I was like, how can one do that? Is that possible? Is that something that I can do in my life? And so it was a real big idea in my life, a real big light bulb moment for me because, well, while I wasn't a big liar, right? It wasn't as if I needed a a big intervention or something, a personal intervention saying, oh, I lie too much, I need to stop lying. I did lie a bit, right? Like the average person, right? You lie some of the time, right? Sometimes, right? We all lie sometimes. Even I lie sometimes today, but it's a lot less than I used to because of this big change. And from that point, it was a big observation for me. I had to notice each time when I lied and when, I, when the opportunity came up, right? So I'd come across opportunities in the day. So maybe even during that year, during that day, I would, you know, walk past, maybe see a friend of mine or something, and I'd say hi, and the opportunity would come up to lie about something, right? And maybe that lie would even benefit me. But I would catch it. I'd be like, oh, okay, that's an opportunity for me to lie. And sometimes I would say, okay, let's correct that and tell the truth. And for the most part, that was, it was kind of easy. It was like, okay, I don't need to lie there. I could tell the truth, and it's probably better for me. But sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to lie, right? And that for me was a tricky thing to do. I was like, okay, when do I need to lie? When do I need to tell the truth? Like, what is this all about? Like, what, what am I doing here, right? If I'm always going to tell the, tr tr the truth, blah, 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 stuttering there, if I'm always going to tell the truth, then when is it okay to lie? Like, what is this about, right? So I made an effort over, the, over time to stop lying altogether, even if I felt like I needed to. Never ever lie, always tell the truth. Always aim for that ideal kind of character, just like the perfect man. Like we have to kind of aim for the ideal in life, right? I know it's maybe not possible to always tell the truth or maybe not possible to never lie, right? Because we're human, we make mistakes. But I think in life in general, with any kind of skill, with any kind of like thing that I'm aiming towards, you should aim for like the perfect amount, right? If you're playing basketball, you should aim for every basket to go in. What's the point in aiming for some of them to miss? Does that make sense? And in a similar sense, like the perfect man, like, like in the Bible, Jesus was a perfect man, a perfect character. And all Christians aim to be somewhat like Jesus. Right? They know that they're never going to be there. They're never going to get to a perfect, like a, a place where they are perfect. But they aim for it nonetheless to get closer and closer because it's an ideal. Because perfection is an ideal that we should all aim for. Right? So with that in mind, I had in my head an idea of what it is to be a good person. And that good person was a person that always told the truth. And we're told as kids that it's not good to lie. But for me, I had to discover that myself, right? We're told by our parents and everything, lying is bad, right? And we might ask why, and a lot of parents, and this is something I hate a lot, by the way, a lot of parents say this phrase, because I said so. I hate that. And it's probably the worst way or the worst response you can give a child. Because if you don't give a reason why, the child doesn't really apply that lesson to itself. It doesn't really know why it's doing something. It's forced to be blindly compliant to whatever you want to do, or whatever you want to tell it to do, right? And so it doesn't really stick in their mind. So at this point in my life, when I was about 18, 19, 20, 
I asked that question to myself. Why is it bad to lie? It seems like a very obvious or basic question to answer, but I had to go down to the roots. I'm going to do that with you today. Why is it bad to lie? Right? There are some justifications for lying, right? So let's say we start at the basics. Why lie in the first place, right? Why lie? Let's break it down all the way to the basics. Why lie? Okay? Maybe you can lie to gain some personal benefit, right? Gain personal benefit. Maybe you can lie to someone and that way you can, you know, get a, a toy or earn some more money or gain some affection from another person by lying about something. So gain personal uh, benefit. That's what it is. Right? Maybe you can lie to get out of trouble, right? Maybe you did something bad, you stole something, and you lie about it because you can get out of it as like a bit of trouble. You avoid going to prison or you avoid getting in trouble with your parents or you avoid, you know, getting caught for something that you did, like maybe you cheated on your partner, you can get out of trouble. Okay, okay. Next one. You can lie to save face, right? And what that means is you lie, save face, you lie to perhaps not insult somebody directly to their face. And so maybe you, maybe someone's dress looks bad and they ask you, oh, how does my dress look? And you say, oh, it looks great. It looks fantastic. And so you kind of lie, but maybe that's a good way to lie. I don't know. It feels like it, but it's still a lie, right? So to save face means to not insult someone. And I'll come back to that because this is probably the trickiest one to navigate, right? Gaining personal benefit, that seems scummy. Getting out of trouble, that seems scummy as well. But to save face, it's kind of, there's good intentions there for someone else. So it's not entirely selfish, but we'll see about that. And I would say cheating and stealing also comes under the category of lying. Cheating and stealing. Because to cheat in a game is to be deceptive about the fact that you're following the rules, right? And in life as well, right? So you pretend you're following the rules when really you're not. And when you're stealing, you're being deceptive about the fact that you have rightful possession of something, right? The fact that you own something, you're pretty much lying about that when you steal something. Oh yeah, I own this, rightfully but you don't because you stole it. So you're lying about that, right? So these come under the category of lying for me. And these are the main ways in which people can lie in life. To gain personal benefits, to get out of trouble, to save face, and to lie and cheat and steal, right? Those kind of, those three come under the same category for me. I've known people like this. Oftentimes in life, when you find a liar, they tend to do all of these things. Not just one, but all of them, right? They lie to gain personal benefit. They lie to get out of trouble. They lie to save face. They lie to cheat and steal. And to be honest with you, the one I resonate with the most, I used to play a lot of poker, right? There's a story about this, okay? Let's just draw this story out, okay? I used to play a lot of poker, and in poker, you've got to be really good at lying, okay? Bit of a side story here, but let me just, just bear with me with this, okay? And so... I was winning a lot because I was pretty good at poker and this guy with the cards on the table, he was like, you know what mate, did you have strict parents when you were a kid? And I was like, yes, I did, right? I was wondering why he asked that and he said, because you're a very good liar, <laughs> right? And so he made the inference that having strict parents it made you a good liar because you had to as a kid, if you have strict parents, you have to lie to get out of trouble because the consequences are big. So lying becomes something that's necessary when you are in danger like that, perhaps, or when you feel like you're in danger because you're a kid. And danger is angry parents. Danger is, you know, getting in trouble because of your strict parents. And so perhaps when I was a kid, I learned to be a good liar, right? Good liar right? But despite having that skill, I can still be honest, right? Despite that, I can still tell the truth. And that means so much more when I can lie and when I can be good at lying, 
right? And just because you're good at lying, it doesn't mean you should be a liar. Right? And we'll come to that as well. Okay, there's a lot to explore here, but I'll break it down into the basics as we continue here. So to return to the, the list that we had, we have gaining personal benefit, getting out of trouble, to save face, and to cheat and steal. So why might these be wrong to do? Let's explore that today. Okay, so the first one is to be, let's say you get caught for lying, right? You're caught. The implications are far worse than just a slap on the wrist, right? What you've inherently done is broken your trust, maybe permanently, with somebody. Trust is broken, right? So with this person or this individual, you might have broken trust. And then, as a consequence, your reputation with everyone else, people who haven't even met you yet, word gets around. This person has lied. So the trust with them is broken before you've even met them, right? Which is, is really bad, depending on how big the lie was or how much word gets out, you know, people talk. And so if your trust with one person is broken and with the next person, and it's a permanent effect, it's a somewhat permanent effect. It's, it's very difficult to come back from lying about something big, perhaps, or even something small, right? Once someone lies, especially in my life, I, I know this to be true. Once someone lies, it's a somewhat permanent effect. I'm like, okay, I don't know if I can trust them, right? Because if, they, if they've lied once, I don't know whether they're going to tell the truth again. And it's just huge for me because... Well, especially people with trust issues, what's happened to them is that a lot of people lie in their lives, right? So they, they, they develop a lower and lower tolerance for being able to trust someone once they've lied, especially, right? And maybe they don't even tell, they don't even trust people when they tell the truth, right? They second guess it. But for me in my life, I've known a lot of people to lie to me. And the lesson I've learned is that you probably shouldn't trust them again unless a, a very long time period has passed, or maybe they like genuinely made a good character change in their lives. Right? It's very rare that people change. Right? With us in self-improvement, we specifically go out of our way to change for the better. But you have to understand, we are a very small part of the population. We are the 0.001% of people who genuinely want to be better with our lives. The rest of those guys... The people that might lie to you, it's quite likely that they will still lie for a long time to come. So the breaking of trust is a logical thing to do. It makes sense. It's not as if we are trying to be, you know, labeling someone bad. It's just, it just makes sense to not trust this person again. It's a logical thing. It doesn't mean you're a bad person for judging this person. Judgment is a useful thing, a useful tool that humans use to determine whether someone is a certain way, right? In this case, we determine that someone is a, a liar about things. They tend to lie so that maybe we can't trust them in the future. And this extends further as well with like games and things like this. So let's say it's a game, right? If you cheat in a game in a similar way, the trust is broken, right? Trust broken. The players won't want you to play with them anymore, right? They're going to think of you as a bad person. Okay, we don't want to play with this guy anymore, right? Similarly, with flattering someone, if you blatantly flatter someone and they find out about it, the key point here being that they find out, right? If you cheat in a game and they find out, the players are not going to want to be with you, right? We'll get to a point at which we discuss what happens when you don't get find out, when you successfully lie. Is that still bad, right? So we'll discuss that in a minute, okay? When you flatter someone and you get found out, Right? They know that what you say right, is false, is full of lies. Right? When you talk to someone and you say, okay, oh, this dress that you're wearing, is, it looks great, but in reality it doesn't look great. And, you know, okay, maybe the, the example is a bit difficult to describe here, but let's say you're just definitively wrong about something, right? That you flatter someone and you just, you're just wrong, right? And they're just trying to, they get the idea that you're trying to make them happy and they get a bit, they feel a bit icky about them. Okay, this guy's saying something that's false to make me, try and make me happy. What are they trying to do? They don't trust you anymore, right? And let's say about knowledge as well, right? So let's say they have a question for you, 
right? The question that they want to answer and you give a response despite not knowing about that and they find out that your response was incorrect, right? Now they, they can no longer trust your information, right? That's info, right? So different categories here, all, all of which involve a trust being broken, right? A trust with information, a trust with flattery and compliments, a trust with the games that you play, a trust with being caught with anything that you lie about in general. So mainly here, it's a trust being broken. That's what's wrong with being caught with lying. So we discussed being caught with lying. Okay. What if you're not caught? What if, what, what else is there? There is this fake story that you have to keep up with, right? When you lie, you have to make up something in the first place. Okay. And then when you ask further about it, you've got to make up another lie, right? And then another lie, right? And it keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And it becomes this elaborate, strange story that you have to keep up with because it's fake, right? You have to memorize all these fake facts in your brain because you've made the entire story up. And the stress that, that comes with and the, the kind of mental anguish, the weight on your chest of that story you have to keep up with, let alone the fact, the stress that comes from lying in the first place, right? All this stress adds up and it becomes a very difficult life to live, right? Life is not pleasant when you lie. Life becomes a hell on earth, right? Somewhat analogous to what it describes in the Bible. If you do bad things, you go to hell. In my mind, a hell is a metaphor for what you live on earth when you do bad things. And when you lie, people have that phrase, don't they? How do you go to sleep at night doing these bad things? It's hard to sleep if you lie about things. It's hard to be at peace with the world and with yourself if you lie about things, right? So that's the fake story part of it, right? And what about this one? It damages your behavior, right? So I'll write behavior for this. Behavior. How does that work, right? The thing is, if you have to lie in the first place, that implies that you've done something a bit shameful, right? And so how do you feel about yourself knowing the fact that you feel the need to lie about something? That means you live a shameful life, right? Your life is shameful. And beyond that, because you can lie, you allow yourself in your mind to say, okay, I can do these shameful things because if I do them, I can lie about it, right? All these lies surrounding your life become a perpetual machine that fuels your shameful behavior because you know for a fact that you can lie about it later, right? So the more you lie, the more your shamefulness in your behavior upgrades and upgrades and upgrades and you level up your level of shameful behavior, right? So your behavior goes down, speaking in terms of morality, in terms of like how you behave, because you can do bad things and get away with them, because you can lie, your behavior becomes worse and worse and worse. And clearly, that isn't a good thing. And another thing about not being caught as well is your the fact that you're taking advantage of a human being, right? We're going to discuss here about Immanuel Kant's philosophy, okay? So human beings. Let's say you've succeeded in lying, you've gone away with it, cool. You've done a lie and it ended up great for you, right? Fantastic. In all likelihood, this person that you've lied to ends up worse off, right? You might have gained something, but they end up worse off in all likelihood, right? So this is a situation in which you are using someone and making their life worse off for your own personal gain, right? And that's a bit of a, that gives me that feeling in, the, in my gut. That's kind of wrong, right? Like I talked about at the start, when I would lie, when I would kind of have that feeling, it would come up in my mind, okay, this is a lie I could tell, but I could feel something, it's wrong, right? And that's what led me down this path of trying to figure out why exactly it's wrong, right? It's because I'm taking advantage of another, another human being. And even if they might not, you know, 
have anything bad happen to them. The fact is, I'm taking advantage of a human being, right? In Immanuel Kant's philosophy, he says, a human being should not be a means to an end, right? So if I want something, if I want, you know, to, I don't know, have more money, I shouldn't use a human being and to like lie to that human being to get that money, right? The human being shouldn't be a means to an end, right? I've used this human being like an object, right? So let's say I lied to a human being so that he might get me money, right? So let's drop this out and say I lied to him, right? I lied to a human being so that he can get me money and he's being deceived by that lie and he ends up worse off, right? That's Immanuel Kant's philosophy. And it's probably why we have such a big radar for like scammers on the internet, right? People who lie to people in order to trick them and gain money from it, and we call them a scammer, right? We just have a gut feeling of like, that's not a good thing, right? You've tricked these people to just gain money, and that's not good. We have a gut feeling about that. We just know, right? And it's because of this fact that human beings should not be used as a means to an end. Right, let me just write that down. Means to an end. To an end, right? Human beings should not be used in that way, right? So what are the alternatives here? We discussed all these ways of lying and why it might be bad, right? Because of, you know, the fake story that you have, the trust that might be broken, the behavior that you have spiraling downwards, and the fact that you're taking advantage of human beings and using them like objects in your little chess game of life, right? What are the alternatives here? Well, the main alternative, obviously, as I've talked about in this video, is telling the truth. So alternative, alternative. My, my spelling IQ tends to decrease when I'm trying to make a video at the same time as spelling. Alternative, the truth, right? Clearly. So how exactly does that work? There's three easy ones I can rattle off straight away, okay? One is when you admit the truth, right? Even if you've done something bad, right? Let's say you've done something bad, then you admit it, right? Somehow, that garners more respect, right? Even though you've done something bad. You could say, for example, there's like maybe a story that goes like this. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I, I, I got drunk last night. I threw up all over your sofa. I'm really sorry about it. That's my fault. That wasn't anyone else. I know you were trying to find out who it was. It was me. I'm so sorry. I'll clean it up. I'm sorry about it. Let me just do that for you, right? Even though you've done this bad thing of throwing up on this guy's sofa, right? It's respectable. You kind of feel that respect for me because I admitted that, even though I didn't need to even though I could have gotten away with it, right? There's respect to be had there, strangely enough, right? So that's just the first one, right? Let's look at number two. Number two is the fact that it is stress-free. So remember that fake story I talked about, right? You have to remember this elaborate story about how one thing connects to the other. And because of that, the stress in your brain right, is immense, right, you have to remember, okay, this connects to this, this connects to that, and that branches up to there, and it becomes this Im immense, elaborate kind of thing, this scheme that you have to keep track of, because you've lied about everything, you have to lie more and more and more and more, and just spirals downwards in this very awful way, right, and the stress that builds from that is incredibly bad, but imagine if you have none of that, right? If you can just be you, right? You can just lie down and kind of like relax. It genuinely feels like this, right? Because you don't have to keep track of anything. You know what the truth is, right? Oh, you know, I don't know what happened yesterday. I think it was this and that and this. You don't have to make something up like, okay, oh, I wasn't there. I wasn't drunk. I, I didn't throw up on your sofa. Uh, I was, I was actually over here. I was doing this and, and that. And it's such a stressful thing to kind of t like keep track of all that stuff. And if you don't need to do that, 
it, life is genuinely, it genuinely feels like this, right? Right? The truth feels like this. I can tell you now, okay? And lying is an immense, 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 fully stressful thing. Like you're, you just like, like crazy. Like you just like, ah. Uh, I don't know how to describe it fully, but like you get the feeling of stress when you lie about something, when you have to keep track of everything in your mind. It's terrible. It's terrible, right? You know that in yourself from your own life experience, right? And number three, let's have a look at this. Number three is that you're just reliable as a person, right? When you are ready to admit when you don't know something, right? When you can say, you know what? I don't know about that thing, right? That means that you haven't just made something up. And so when you do know something, ah, I know about that, right? Then you become a reliable source of information, right? You, people can trust you. Trust is built instead of broken here. They're like, oh, okay. Dylan normally says when he doesn't know something about something, right? So when he knows something about something, and he tells me that, I can trust him, right? And he will tell me exactly what he knows and what he doesn't know. Okay, so if you asked me about, I don't know, visiting Scotland, right? Oh yeah, I know about visiting the Isle of Skye. I know about going to the Loch Ness, right? But I don't know much about the Shetland Islands. I don't know much about the Auckland Islands or whatever, right? So I can be like specific and say, okay, I know about this. I don't know about this. People just trust you better, right? And this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine because, well, I have, a, I have a story here, right? There was once a time when I was traveling in a town that I didn't know about, a city, really, right? And I was due to take a bus home and I didn't know which bus up to be at, right? There were so many bus stops, bus stop A, bus stop C, bus stop B, right? And I didn't know which one it was, right? And so there was a person I was with at the time who knew a bit more about that town because that person lived there right and like lived nearby right and so this person told me oh it's definitely bus stop b it's definitely bus stop b right and we waited 15 minutes 30 minutes and our bus never came 45 minutes one hour and it turns out that the person was wrong right then the trust i had in this person was broken right and that person might not have meant to get it wrong, but she wasn't willing to admit that she didn't know. She wasn't willing to say, I don't know about that, right? And so it really annoyed me, right? It really, really, I was like, oh, I trusted you to know the right information. I didn't check on my phone or anything because I just trusted you, right? I thought you knew what you were doing, but you didn't. So that person in my mind right now is not as reliable as they could have been right? Being willing to admit when you don't know something is a very useful characteristic for yourself and for those around you to build that trust, right? Otherwise, the trust becomes broken, right? So, willing, being willing to admit when you don't know something unusually makes you more reliable, not less reliable, because people know that when you say that you know something, you actually know something. That's the power of the truth. So we've seen various things here. And these are the more obvious points. I'm going to discuss some more complicated points in just a second. Here's the benefits. Reliability, as you've seen before, right? Having a stress-free life. Having a life that is peaceful. At peace with yourself and the world. And having a life that garners respect from people. Even though you do the wrong thing sometimes. Even though you make some mistakes, you get respect from other people. But what's more complex than this? Let's have a look. Okay, so returning to that saving face thing, right? How do you save face in a good way? How do you like tell the truth? How do you like not insult someone when they ask you about something and you genuinely believe that it's like, it wasn't a good, good thing for you? You're like, ah, oh, okay, that thing was like bad, right? Let's say you, you think it's bad and they ask you about it and you don't want to hurt their feelings, right? There's a story from Simon Sinek, right? 
So Simon Sinek, he's a, a speaker and he goes to visit a friend of his in a play, right? And so he's sitting in the audience and there's this big play and they're all in costume and everything like that. They're doing this kind of like, you know, whatever the play is, it doesn't really matter. And he genuinely thinks the play is bad. This is awful. It's garbage, right? It's horrendous. And this is a close friend of his, right? And she genuinely cares about this play. It's like very important to her. She's worked very hard on it, right? And it matters a lot to her. So this is a really tricky situation for Simon, right? Simon's thinking, okay, how do I, I'm probably going to meet her afterwards. So how do I go about this, right? It's very tricky. It's very, very tricky. So what he does. So this friend of Simon's comes up to him after the show, right? Glasses here. And she says, oh, what do you think about it, right? And bear in mind, she's in like full makeup and everything. So she's got like all the, the kind of like, you know, whatever the makeup looks like. I'm <laughs> terrible at drawing this. But she's got all the costume on, the makeup. She, she, Simon can tell that she's very excited about this. It's very important to her. And the emotions are quite high, right? The excitement and everything like that. So Simon, he very carefully says, I... I'm so glad to be here to watch you do this, right? I have some more things to say, but I'd like to discuss with them with you later on, if that's okay, right? And none of this was a lie, right? He was genuinely glad to be there to see his friend perform a show. And he does have some more to say, and he'll say it later, right? And so in that way, he avoided insulting her and also avoided lying he told the truth in that little speech he gave right glad to be here i've got a lot to say i'll tell you later on okay but you go enjoy yourself right and indeed he lived up to that so later on whether it was on a, a zoom call or whatever he met with this person right and told her you know what I actually thought it wasn't as good as maybe you hoped it was. And maybe he said it in a nice way, right? Maybe he said, okay, I think maybe the lighting here was maybe a bit too much here. Maybe the directions on the stage was like this and that. And maybe he gave more details to give him like some more constructive criticism here to be nicer about it, right? And there's always a nice way to say something that might inherently be bad or received as an insult, Right? And it is tricky. Simon Sinek is a very skilled speaker, right? And he knew what to say. But I will say, this is definitely a skill that you can upgrade because I've experienced this in my life. At the beginning of this journey, I found it very difficult, right? Or very hard, let's say. Very hard to do this kind of thing, to maintain the truth, and somehow not insult someone as well. Right? It's very difficult. And it still is difficult. But I've learned the skill. And so it gets easier and easier over time. It is a skill that you can upgrade. Right? And so how exactly do you get, navigate this? How exactly? What's the framework that I can give you to kind of like be able to do this and learn to do this over time? The main point I want to make is that it, it's, it can be done. Right? Can be done done it is difficult but it can be done it's dependent on so in the in the Simon Sinek story we learned about the timing right he waited to tell the truth the tone right depending on how you kind of intonate your tone like the way that you say it basically that's what tone is if you don't haven't heard of it before and the language you use right the words that you use are very important to kind of Make it so that the person isn't as insulted as they could be, right? To minimize their hurt, to minimize, to minimize their sad feeling when you tell them this, right? That's the aim of the game, right? And the last little complication I want to talk about is this lie by omission. Because technically you could say Simon kind of in the first instance of talking to this person lied by omission. He didn't say the full truth but he waited to do it later. And in the story, we can probably feel that that was okay. 
omission. Okay. <laughs> we didn't feel like it was wrong to lie by omission there, right? It was kind of okay. But sometimes it is bad to lie by omission, right? Lying by omission, basically, let me explain that first of all. That means to lie by leaving out information. Leaving out info. Okay. So maybe it could be argued that Simon, in the first instance, he lied by omission. But in the story, it felt okay because he did it in a nice way. When is this a bad thing? When is it incorrect? Let's say I have a hypothetical here. Let's say you were in a shop, an antique shop, and you knocked over, there's a vase, a very valuable vase, and you knocked it over, right? And it broke. It's got a crack in it, right? Let's say now you don't say anything about it. Let's say, actually, that you went to the shopkeeper and you said, excuse me, there's a, there's a broken vase, right? Broken vase. But you neglect to, to mention that it was you that broke the vase. And let's say the shopkeeper was tricked by you saying it's a broken vase and he believed, for some reason, that you didn't break it because you didn't mention it, right? That in my heart, and you probably feel this too, would be a wrong way of lying by omission, right? You can kind of sense that in your gut. But why is that wrong, right? So in my life, to determine whether it is right to lie by omission or not, I've come up with this kind of little mini rule, right? It's quite simple. Are you deceiving someone, right? Are you deceiving, right? So in the Simon Sinek story, he wasn't deceiving the person into believing that he loved the show. The person still was in a state of not knowing what he thought about the show. Because Simon said, I'll tell you later what I thought about the show. Right? He didn't say, oh, I thought it was... Oh man, what did he say? So he said, I'm glad to be here and I'll tell you about it later. Right? He didn't say, I'm glad to be here. And in, 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 by implication thinking it was great, right? He mentioned the fact that, look, I have thoughts, but I'll tell you about them later, right? So in this situation, you're being deceiving by not mentioning the broken vase that you broke it. You're just saying that there was a broken vase. The truth, not deceiving the person, would be saying, I broke it. I broke it. So that's how you would like write that wrong. That's how you'd like iron that out, right? You would feel bad, right? This is a good kind of a check as well. Do you feel bad about lying by omission, right? If I did this, I would feel bad. I'd be like, oh, that's okay. I probably didn't, shouldn't have done that. I probably shouldn't, I should have mentioned that I broke it, right? And so perhaps that's wrong, right? Whereas the story with Simon Sinek, that feels okay. Because he was like very clear about what he said, despite, you know, having some lack of information, right? Technically leaving out some information, but he was very clear about it, right? And that seems to be okay. So these are just some epiphanies I've had about lying and what I think about it in my life, right? This journey for me to return to my story, right, has been incredibly difficult, right? Not easy at all, right? I'm not saying that I'm like a a huge expert on telling the truth and not lying. It wasn't easy at all, right? I had to try really hard. It was it was difficult, right? Incredibly hard, but I'll tell you, it was 100% worth it, right? 100%, I would never go back. No regrets at all, right? Because it's so much of a better life to live because of these reasons, right? One, stress-free, right? You live life, with this weight lifted off your chest. There's nothing. It feels, that's genuinely how it feels, right? Let's say you go about life with like a weight attached to your ankle, right? This huge weight, right? You can get rid of that weight just by living this kind of way, living an honest life. It honestly feels like you're floating. It's, it's genuinely like a, a wonderful feeling. I, and I can't describe it in words fully, but it's just, I knew what it felt like to lie in the past. I knew what it felt like to have some amount of lying, 
right? Maybe when I, when I was a kid, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I lied a little bit. But then converting or like maybe like changing attitudes to like tell the truth more of the time felt amazing. It felt great, right? And I can't say that I never lie, right? But perhaps I can say that when I do lie, it's pretty rare and and or it's unintentional. Unintentional, right? So I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I definitely lie sometimes, right? It, it, it happens. It slips out. Maybe I don't have time to correct someone because they have a wrong opinion of me and or something like, something like that. It's like I can't like catch every mole or whack every mole here and sometimes it kind of slips out sometimes and maybe I do lie sometimes but on the whole I would say in the majority of my life I live with an attitude of trying to tell the truth wherever I can whenever I can not when it's convenient to me but in absolutely every scenario right not when I can personally gain from it but in every single scenario right? that's the attitude I want to bring to this Right? And it has genuinely result- resulted in that kind of feeling. The feeling of floating without a weight on your ankle or your chest or whatever you feel your stress builds. Imagine like letting go of the stress in your back or your shoulders or your wherever you feel stress build in your body. Right? Because stress can be a physical thing. It can manifest in physical ways. Right? And number two, it's just built a reputation around me of people knowing that, you know, Dylan's a, a very honest person. <laughs> Equals honest. That's how I sound like a, a bit of a narcissist when I say that myself. It's just a, a reputation thing. A rep. A trust. Right? When Dylan says something, he, you know that it's, you know, it's true. He knows that for a fact. Right? And if he doesn't know, he'll say that. And that's something I learned as well. Like, to be precise in your speech. To be, to go... Okay, let's, let's move on from the, the benefits of this. I learned in the past or in the, in the process of doing this, to be very precise in what I say. Precise. Oh my goodness. My pen stopped working at this point in the video. Okay, to be precise in my speech. For example, I crossed a river recently, and I was traveling to Scotland. I crossed a river, right? And I was able to do it in my shoes, and I was completely dry. My socks were dry, right? And I could say... Okay, this river is crossable in shoes. Shoes are okay for that. But it's missing some details because I know, for, for example, that my shoes are pretty waterproof. Right? So to be extra precise about that, I can mention some more details. I could say, okay, I have waterproof shoes. If your shoes aren't waterproof, you might get wet. Okay? So, you know, here's the detail that I want to mention. Right, this level of precision and like mentioning all the details is included in telling the truth fully, right? Because yes, technically I've told the truth, but I want to be more precise in what I say. Right? Let's pick another another example of this. Maybe I say uh, there's a girl I'm interested in, right? And I talk about her and I say I like her, right? I like her. But this can be interpreted in multiple different ways. If my pen can work here. And I could specify, yes, I like her in a romantic way. Not like a friend way. Okay? Romantic. And that detail is something that I might not have needed to mention, but it's a a specificity. Hard word to say. Yes, I like her in a romantic sense. Right? That's the detail I can mention there. Right? So to be precise in your speech is to kind of give the details that might not be necessary to make sure that no one misinterprets you. Okay? So basically, what it is, is being very clear. Absolutely clear and transparent with absolutely everything that you say. When you can, when you have the time for it, right? And that that's where, like if you run out of time, if you're in a rush somewhere... That's where lies can slip out, right? That's what I was talking about before when I lie pretty rarely or unintentionally. When you're in a rush and have no time, maybe you might have to like, you know, summarize something very quickly and that might lead to like some very small lie slipping out, okay? And as long as you have the intention of not lying and telling the truth, oh goodness, my pen, not lying and telling the truth, then 
I believe that's the best that you can do. If you know you've done your best, then you should be able to sleep at night very peacefully. Okay? So do your best. At least there's that. So to conclude here, right? I've talked about a lot today and it might be a lot to take in. But the summary of this conclusion is that it is 100% guaranteed that you will live a better life if you adopt the principle of always telling the truth. This has just been my story. So you've learned from some stories I've given you and the ways in which I have adapted this in my life. Even though it's a very difficult thing to do, I promise you, you will live a 100% better life, right? 100% guarantee of a better life, right? 100%. I can guarantee you that. So if you implement this today, I guarantee it. Life will be better. You have less stress in your life. You'll be more reliable. The interactions you have with other people will be so much stronger. And you'll build up friendships that are better and more connecting than ever before, right? So I'm trying to find a way of summarizing this in, in like the most, you know, a, a really pithy sentence. But that's just it. Life is better when you tell the truth. Life eliminates all the stress that you feel from having to, you know, lie about things. You don't have any, you know, motivation to be shameful about things and like your behavior doesn't become more, you know, degrade over time. You become an upstanding citizen because you know you have to tell the truth about it. You live in a truthful way. Even when people aren't around, you live in a way in which you know you should live, right? You put your litter in the bin. You kind of help out the the cat stuck in the tree or you just become a better person because you know that you have to tell the truth about it, right? This is what I did. Here's what I did with my time, right? So you become a better person. You become a more upstanding citizen and it's a better way to live. People will begin to love you and appreciate you for this quality because it, it's quite rare. It's quite rare, right? And I know in my life, <laughs> sad to say, it's quite rare as well, right? But I know those few people who will tell the truth to me and those few are the people that I keep close to me and the people that I choose to have in my life. And so it will be the same for you. If you want to live as a good man, a good person in life, then this is one way to do that. So I hope this helps you out in life. I genuinely believe if you implement the things I talked about in this video, your life will get better. I can promise you that. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you out. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. Take care. Peace.